This is CBS. Coming up on Newsline 9, authorities look for two suspects in a Southside homicide. Water, water isn't everywhere in Edmonds. And aerosol sprays and your children, what you should know. These stories and more coming up on Newsline 9. Join us. Brian Griffin, yeah, he's very special. They don't make many like him. I mean, here's a Rhodes Scholar named one of the top young attorneys in America, and he wants to be attorney general. I think we're really lucky. With people like him, we could turn this state around. He's not a politician. He says we've got too many politicians in political office. I think he's right. Brian Griffin for attorney general, because you deserve better. Pizza Inn for a medium or large pizza and a pitcher of Coca-Cola or other soft drink, and this 60-ounce mason jar Coca-Cola pitcher is yours free. Chill out at Pizza Inn. Get into pizza, get into pizza, yeah. Premiering Oklahoma's first newscast in full stereo, KWTV9. Now, the number one rated newscast in Oklahoma with Mike Carpenter, Sheila Hyland, Sports with Ed Murray, and Alan Mitchell with the weather. This is Newsline 9 Weekend Edition. Good evening. Police are looking for two men who are suspects in a murder and robbery in South Oklahoma City. The body of 63-year-old Lloyd Thompson was found in his apartment by police early this afternoon. They had been called by a neighbor. What do we have here is a witness saw two, uh, two Mexican males coming down the steps of these apartments, carrying some stuff. As he watched them, they got into their car, which they had backed into the driveway here, and took off at a high rate of speed. The car is believed to be a 1978 or 79 Brown Mercury. Anyone with information is urged to call the Oklahoma City Police Department. The nationwide cocaine epidemic appears to be escalating in Oklahoma City. Police say they are working 100% more cocaine-related cases than they were this time last year. To make a bad situation worse, Captain M.T. Berry says the quality of cocaine is better than it used to be. Typically in the past, the cocaine that we received, as far as purity is concerned, has been about 15 to 20 percent pure. Uh, the cocaine that we're getting now is anywhere from 60 to 80 percent pure. Barry says this past month, the police lab has analyzed enough cocaine to supply 1,200 people with one dose. Opponents of the year-old liquor by the drink law say they are surprised at the effects it has had. Opponents predicted the new law would increase consumption and drunk driving in Oklahoma, but neither has happened. There's a growing concern for health across the country, and this translates into less drinking, and those who do drink uh, appear to be drinking lighter alcoholic beverages. Uh, another thing has been the intensive campaign against drunk driving. Proponents of liquor by the drink, on the other hand, say they projected all along the new law would reduce drunk driving. It was the liquor by the drink law that gave teeth to the law enforcement ability in Oklahoma. Both sides agree whatever the reason for the decrease in consumption and in drunk driving, they're happy about it. Setting up a new business can be intimidating. Realizing that, the Oklahoma Tax Commission has decided to make it easier for business people to apply for all those permits and licenses they need. The change is being praised by small businessmen, as Newsline 9's Tracy Bryan reports. Business at Fossey's is cooking. Owner Steve Fossey is happy with his new restaurant and catering business. But he says it wasn't easy to set it up, especially when it came to getting all the necessary permits and licenses from the Tax Commission. Well, it just it was kind of a one at a time thing. Uh, uh, I'd hear that I needed a tax permit, and I'd go get that, and I'd hear I need a health license, and I'd go get that. Fossey says it took weeks to get everything necessary to start putting food on the tables. He's excited about the move underway at the tax commission to consolidate. Well, I think it would uh, save, number one, I think it'd save a lot of time, and it wouldn't be so intimidating. Uh, you know, to uh, uh, open a business if you knew that uh, somebody was going to kind of lead you uh, and, and do all, you could just go down there and they'd say, well, you need this and you need that and you need this and, and, and help you with it. Tax attorney Lauren Whalen is also pleased. 
He thinks the new streamlined tax division will make the businessman's life easier and perhaps improve Oklahoma's business image. It can be very frustrating to have to go to the sales and use tax division to discuss the issuance of a sales tax permit, to have to go to the motor fuel tax division and worry about uh, permits uh, that they might uh, have to issue. Meanwhile, Steve Fossey says he wishes the new consolidated business tax division had been online before so that he could have gotten a slice of the easier tax-paying life. Tracy Bryan, Newsline 9. Oklahoma's unemployment rate is the highest it's been since July of 1983. The Oklahoma Employment Security Commission says the state's unemployment rose to 9% in June, with more than 5,000 Oklahomans joining the jobless ranks. Altogether, more than 147,000 people in the state are jobless. The unemployment rate now is just four-tenths of a percent lower than it was three years ago. Mike? Oklahoma officials were hoping the Boeing maintenance plant would put a dent in the unemployment rate, but yesterday's announcement that the plant would locate in Lake Charles dashed those hopes. The Boeing plant would have meant about 1,400 jobs for Oklahoma City. One civic leader says the reason Boeing decided not to come here is because citizens have voted down measures to upgrade the city. If people aren't willing to bite the bullet and pay for necessary things, then that type of attitude is not one that especially a major company is looking for. They're looking for progress. They're looking to come into a place where people are proud of their city and are willing to pay their share. Hodges says Boeing's decision may persuade other businesses to think twice before locating in Oklahoma City. In all fairness, though, uh, many of the leaders who were actively involved in the Boeing recruiting program say that, in fact, uh, it may help persuade other businesses to come here because we came in we number were, two. Yes, we were in the running. So out of several other locations. That's significant. Mm -hmm. There's more head on Newsline 9. Alan Mitchell says cooler temperatures could be on the way. Teaching the blind a valuable lesson. Keeping your children safe from deadly toxic sprays. And next, no more Mr. Nice Guy in Edmond. Stay with us. The city of Edmond is facing a severe water shortage this evening. Water levels are so low that city officials are calling for mandatory rationing. Newsline 9's Alicia Malibu reports. The water still flows freely in Edmond today, but on Monday, car washing like this could cost you a hefty fine. That's when an odd even rationing plan goes into effect. If your address ends with an odd number, you can only water on odd number days. The plan also bans outdoor watering between noon and 7 p.m. <laughs> Assistant City Manager Jim Couch says the dry conditions have prompted folks to use more water. Usually, Edmond has 8 million gallons of water in reserve. Last night, there was only 2 million gallons. Our reserves are, are at, at a minimum. Uh, we do have an adequate amount on reserve for, for fire flow. But that's all we have, and uh, we've been suffering low pressure around town all over the last 48 hours. Residents like Elaine Cathy have noticed a difference in water pressure. In the kitchen, the sink faucet and the tub faucet and all, it's been real low. City officials say if folks abide by the mandatory rationing plan, water reserves should be back to normal soon. For those who don't obey the plan, police may come to your door with a warning or a $100 fine. Alicia Malaby, Newsline 9. A severe drought in the southeast may affect the price of beef here. The farmers and ranchers have been battling the heat for two weeks. They've lost $300 million in crops so far, and water reservoirs are at an all-time low. Ranchers there are being forced to sell cattle early because of the drought, and that's bad news for Oklahoma cattlemen. It will disrupt orderly production and marketing of cattle in those states and put uh, excess tonnage of beef on the market, which has its uh, effect on the entire beef cattle market throughout the nation. Freeney says while cattlemen will be hurt by the glut of beef on the market, consumers may see a benefit at the checkout stand. Propellants used in aerosol cans may be especially dangerous to children just because of their smaller size. The Journal of the American Medical Association says a two-year-old girl nearly died after breathing fumes from a butane-propelled deodorant can. The child had seizures and spent a week in the hospital. Vicki Lewis has more. Come here, sit down. Mm -hmm. Sit down for a minute. Good 
There we go. Just a minute, Mom's gonna spray her. If she sprays too much, her child could wind up in the emergency room. Eight years ago, chemicals like propane and butane replaced Freon as propellants. The change was supposed to keep the ozone layer intact. And while the ozone may be safer, children face a new risk. The newer propellants are found in products all around the house, and they can cause serious heart injury. We believe that it works similar to what the Freons, how they used to work, and that is that it sets the heart up to have an abnormally fast beat, and this fast beat uh, causes potential problems, life-threatening problems, and usually necessitates the use of electrical shock therapy to get the heart back to the regular rhythm. Butane poisoning has only recently been documented from this source. However, Dr. Lara says if more cases turn up, aerosols might have to be banned altogether. If you already have aerosol products in your house, such as deodorant or hairspray, you might want to check the list of ingredients. If they contain butane or propane, doctors say you should treat them just like any other household poison and keep them out of the reach of children. When it comes time to replace them, you might want to consider a non-aerosol. In the case of deodorant, you could choose a stick or roll-on. It could save the life of your child. Vicki Lewis, Newsline 9. Thank you, Vicki. And uh, we've had some very hot, hot weather. It might cool down. We'll see when we come back. Don't Stay with us. It was real hot today. In fact, it was hotter than you might have thought. Right. That's right. Uh, well, today, officially out of the airport, uh, we broke 100 degrees for the first time today. It got up to 102, and it's still 102, but the humidity's down a little bit, so actually it makes it feel just maybe one or two degrees cooler than that. But anyway, you look at it like you were just saying, Sheila, hot. It is it's just it's plain hot. hot. That's right. Right now, here in Oklahoma City, our temperature's still 102 degrees. There's that low humidity we were talking about, only 20%. Uh, barometer falling now from 30.02 inches and a south wind at 7 miles an hour. Let's check the radar. This is kind of an unusual sight. We haven't seen it for a week or so anyway. There's some rain on it. As a matter of fact, there are some severe thunderstorms on it. Uh, just a few minutes ago, Dodge City, Kansas reported 70 mile an hour wind gusts, as well as uh, some large hail occurring. And these uh, areas, or, or this entire area of severe thunderstorms is pushing kind of to the east southeast at about 20 20 miles an hour and we'll expect to see these storms go ahead and move into the say the northwestern and northern part of the state later on this evening and maybe into uh, central Oklahoma perhaps Oklahoma City area oh, late tonight and uh, through much of tomorrow as well. Okay, let's go to the computer right now. Check today's record high was 109 degrees. Uh, we were down to a mild this morning, 68 degrees. So far, as I mentioned this afternoon, up to 102. And we factor in the humidity with this, and even though we were 102 degrees, the humidity is so dry that it actually gives almost a cooling effect. Now, it's only a couple degrees, but we'll take all we can get right now. Actually, it, it reads 100 degrees is what the discomfort index. And tomorrow will be several degrees cooler, but the humidity will be back up because of the rain and what have you. So even though it'll be cooler it'll still feel just about like what it uh, does right now around the state here's the frontal system pushing into the northwestern part of the state ahead of the front the temperature is just extremely hot 106 degrees would be the official hottest temperature in the state right now up at ponca city however don kirkpatrick uh, called me a few minutes ago from blackwell and don assures me he checked his thermometer three times and it reads 114 degrees there in blackwell now 99 isn't Cool, but uh, the coolest reading in the state right now would be 99 coming in there from Lawton. Over to the east, though, a little bit cooler, about 100 degrees there at uh, McAllister, 101 at uh, Hobart, as well as 100 there at uh, Altus. Now, here's our satellite photo. You can see that area of showers and thunderstorms developing thing up here in the northwestern parts of Kansas. And there's the frontal system, extends way up here to the Great Lakes, severe thunderstorms, tornado watches out around the Great Lakes, so they're having quite a bit of a problem with it up there. However, back behind it, though, there's that cooler air right now, 83 degrees there in Minneapolis, ahead of the front, 93 there in Chicago. Denver right now, 74. They've been in the mid-90s the last few days, so I imagine that's a welcome change. There at uh, Albuquerque, 88, 105 over there at Phoenix. Over to the east, the heat wave continues. Uh, Columbia, South Carolina today, 105 degrees. That's several days in a row now that they've been well above 100. And it looks like maybe on about Tuesday or Wednesday this front, I'll go ahead and slide on in, maybe give those folks down there a welcome break. Now here's tomorrow's forecast map. 
We'll go ahead and try to shove the front through about the central part of the state by midday. Ahead of it, as well as behind it, uh, we'll have that slight chance for showers and thunderstorms. However, if you're traveling out to the west and you want to get wet, go to about Denver area. It looks like they'll have quite a bit of rain and some thunderstorms up in there. Here's our five-day forecast. We'll put in a 20% chance of thunderstorms tomorrow, an afternoon high of 96 degrees, and then we'll just call it mid-90s uh, for pretty much the remainder of the week. Forecast for Oklahoma tonight. Scattered thunderstorms in the north and west uh, later tonight. Winds average out of the south around 10 to 15. Temperature 68 northwest to 78 southeast. For tomorrow, showers with a few thunderstorms, otherwise just partly cloudy. Northerly winds around 5 to 15. That'll be a nice welcome change. See some northerly winds here for, uh, for a change. Highs in the 90s. Oklahoma City, we'll call it a slight chance for thunderstorms, and it won't be near as hot tomorrow. Uh, winds out of the northeast at 10, a uh, high of about 96 degrees. And Sheila, just a reminder that if you know somebody who's elderly living alone, you might give them a call. Stop by, check on them, just see Make how they're sure doing. Make sure they're all right, yeah. That's right. Okay, thanks, Alan. Coming up in sports. Ed Murray reports live from Edmonds Boulevard Bowl, where some of the country's top bowlers are preparing to strike. They hope. Stay with us. Well, Ed Murray has sort of a unique treat for us. He's going to be doing his sports cast from uh, Edmonds Boulevard Bowl, where the Hammer Open gets underway, I believe, tomorrow. Uh, Ed? It certainly does get underway tomorrow, Sheila. And I tell you what, it's been an awful rough day at the office today. Had to come down here and bowl in a little pro-am. Let's take a look at some of the uh, great form displayed by the Channel 9 team. This is, uh, that's, look at the form there. Isn't that great? Whoa, did I leave any there? Oh, I got them, I got them all there. There's Pete Weber, our pro. Uh, Pete was nice enough to let me beat him today. And I'll talk to him about that. But Tony Sellers uh, did it fairly well for our team. And uh, we did quite well. Stan Chase here working the cameras. Look at it, lefty. Stan, you roll from the wrong side. We had a great time today, bowled with Pete Weber, Gary Dickinson, Carmen Salvino. And I'll tell you what, this is Jay Chandler. He is blind and a great, great bowler. I'll tell you what, he could really put it in there. Helped our team out tremendously. We're having a great time. Here's, here's Pete Weber, watch this. Comes back in there and I think we showed one of his good ones. Way to go, Pete. Joining me now here live at the Boulevard Bowl is the Weber family, between them, I think they've got about 40 titles. Dick Weber, Hall of Famer, Pete Weber, uh, hopefully to join his father there someday. And Dick, it, I know everyone's thrilled to have you here in the uh, first ever Hammer Open. Well, thanks, Ed. We're, we're happy to be here for the Hammer Open, the $125,000 Hammer Open, and, and uh, especially for a great host, Rich Altman, because he's uh, done tremendous things for our uh, sport of bowling and also the, for the PBA Association. So uh, we really salute him. He's been a great guy. And you're not here as public relations. You're going to try to surpass Mark Roth and get back into second place in the all-time list. Well, I came here to uh, take the $18,000 uh, uh, first place prize, uh, and then Pete can finish second, and that's fine with me. <laughs> Pete, how about that? No, I don't know about me finishing second. Uh, if it ever come down to me and Daddy's got to beat me, I'm not just going to give it to him. Well, Pete, uh, this field here is, is not your typical summer tour. This is a winter tour field that we have here in Edmond this week. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, you've got all the top name bowlers out here this week uh, because uh, it's just one of our better tournaments, and Richard Altman has done such a fantastic job promoting the tournament through Edmond and the Oklahoma City area that I just don't see why anybody didn't, uh, why everybody didn't show up to bowl. I appreciate it there in the last frame, a strike in your last ball, and you tie me, and you, you left the two pins. I really appreciated that. Yeah, well, I felt a little bad for you, Ed, so I, I slacked off a little bit. I'm glad somebody did. You know, this has been a year, the Andrettis in car racing, the Unsers in car racing. We have the Webbers here, and I, I think it's something that people watch and, and have a special feeling for when they see both Webbers in a tournament. Well, uh, they came out, they come out to see uh, what father and son are going to do, and, uh, of course, the uh, I'll have to say this, the son has the upper hand, Ed. He, he's beaten me, uh, oh, uh, 14 uh, matches out of possibly 18 matches now. I've won four, but uh, when it comes down to the real nitty-gritty uh, in a TV finals, uh, we'll see who, how the cream comes out on the top. Well, the tournament does get underway tomorrow. There are still tickets available. Now, if you want to be here for the Wednesday televised finals, you must buy a season pass, and some of those are still available. But I tell you what, you better get down here tonight or early tomorrow to get your tickets because there will be sellouts. Fantastic crowds here at the Boulevard Bowl. Elsewhere in sports, Australian Greg Norman still leads the 115th British Open despite losing six shots over the last ten holes today. Now, Norman was five under at one point, but here's the tenth hole. Watch this one go 360 around, and uh, 
He took a bogey at 9, 10, and 12. Meanwhile, Tommy Nakajima, look at this one. I was there at Oak Tree yesterday in the Pro-Am for the bowlers. And I didn't do this, though. Tommy knocks it pretty close. He saves his par, and that keeps the Japanese golfer in good contention. Again, Norman just was having all kinds of problems coming in. Another uh, place you don't want to be. Look at the rain and wind, and there goes the ball out that way. This is the 12th hole. Again, Norman took bogey here. And uh, Nakajima was just two shots back, but at 16, Nakajima knocked into the berth, or I forget what the Scots call these things. I call it a creek, and I call it a lost ball. He took a double bogey. Norman had a four-shot lead, but look what Greg does. He again, he bogeys 14, he bogeys 18. Nakajima picks up a birdie at 17. He hit three wood shots to a par five, sank his birdie. Let's look at the leaderboard. After three rounds, Greg Norman has the lead one over par. Tommy Nakajima is two over. The best American is Gary Koch at seven over par. The uh, Hardy's Classic, for the guys that didn't want to go across the sea, you see the leaderboard there in that tournament. And the LPGA, the Boston Five Classic, Pat Bradley has the lead. Uh, she's tied with three others. In baseball, no time for highlights. Let's just go right to the scores as we've got uh, the National League uh, Philadelphia loss to Cincinnati. I guess we don't have time for all the scores today, so we'll show them to you tied at 10. Four New York Mets spent uh, last night in jail. Rick Aguilera, Bob Ojeda, Ron Darling, and... Tim Tuffle, uh, aggravated assault on a police officer at a Houston disco, and we'll have more on that tonight at 10 o'clock. So, Sheila and Mike, uh, another hard day at office, but uh, I guess it all the fun's got to come to an end. I'll see you tonight at 10. Yeah, it must be tough, huh? It looks <laughs> like it. We'll be back in just a moment. Learning to swim can be a traumatic time in any toddler's life. It might be especially scary for someone who's blind. These children, all under seven years old, are learning to swim at Ion YWCA. It's the first swim program for visually impaired kids as far as the organizers know. Getting into a big pool of warm water is a new experience for most of the children, and it's one that frees them of their physical problems. But a lot of them have multiple handicaps, a lot of motor problems, some cerebral palsy, and the water is so buoyant it helps free them up and gives them some range of motion they don't have on land. Instructors say as soon as the children get adjusted to the new feeling of a pool full of water, they don't want to get out. You can't blame them on a hot day like today either. Oh, you sure can. Yeah. Well, that's our news. We'll be back here at 10 o'clock, of course, with the late edition. Hairstyles for the Channel 9 news team furnished by Logsdon Hair Designers. Newsline 9 is the number one rated newscast in Oklahoma.